Hey guys, um, tonight I will bring you along on checking out this 2016 BMW 550. It is uh, again the uh, N63 4.4 V8 twin turbo. Customer's concern is uh, check engine light. Uh, the vehicle is uh, very, very clean, good condition. It only has 55,000 miles. But um, he said that as soon as the, um, he sold it to the customer, uh, I guess almost right away, check engine light came on for them and uh, he wants me to check out and see if it's going to be something major or uh, quick and easy and um, yeah, just to let him know and kind of go from there. Okay, as far as trouble codes, I took some screenshots of the uh, codes that it has. And let's see, we'll start with, now the way this one is set up, it has two DMEs. Each one controls each bank. Uh, DME 1 obviously will control bank 1. DME 2 will control bank 2. Uh, this will be for DME 1. Got uh, some O2 sensor codes. Um, air mass too high. And then we go into DME 2. Air mass too low. Operating uh, air mass. Uh, operating range air mass too low again. The O2 mix-up code again, and then misfire codes on this bank. Uh, it six seven. It for some reason is logging three, and then again seven six five misfires. So here we are after clearing both the MEs, uh, full scan, full delete I will get a shot of how the vehicle runs and I'll let it run to see if we can get anything happen uh, happening as far as trouble codes or any symptoms It seems to start up and idle um, pretty decent. Nothing too abnormal there. Not having driven the vehicle at all either. I just uh, pulled it in and started checking it. So, no code so far with the startup procedure. For DME 1, uh, we'll check DME 2, and nothing there so far either. I will uh, continue to let this idle for a little bit and see what comes up. So I wanted to show you some of the screenshots I was talking about. Uh, I got off camera, but uh, it's just for comparisons to show you. This one I was trying to hold the idle up at about 16, and this is bank 2. Uh, the flow is 37.0, temperature 92, throttle 5.3, and comparative same time. Uh, the temperature again, bank 2 was higher, so let's see. We'll go, okay, so 37.038. 43 big difference there already bank one's breathing more 5.3 five and a half so very close temperature 90 and 92 so hotter again on bank two so flowing less at the close to target same target uh, with these two so flows less as far as being measured and temperature higher on bank two. This one here, I think it's another one at idle, so uh, bank two and bank one, okay, about the same. 
25.5, nothing too crazy, but temperature again higher and just slightly lower as far as when I snapped that picture. Okay, I actually turned the car off uh, and of course off camera. I was able to get an error message to come on and then just out of curiosity I went in uh, OBD and to pull up what it would look like in uh, generic OBD and the one only code that did come up on both on either DME which uh, DME 1 didn't have any DME 2 did and it was this mass air volume airflow B which would be bank 2 uh, circuit range for foreign airflow too low so same uh, this one same code was there previously and this is the only one that popped up here at idle um, I can tell you also when I was trying to uh, compare the Airflow on on the scanner bank to bank. I raised the idle a little bit once I let off of uh, bank two, uh, brought it down from I don't know 1500 and came back down the idle. It started to misfire. Misfire codes came up on cylinder five and then I believe s five six seven something to that extent. But it started to misfire. And the code for the in shutting down injector came on. Okay, so just out of curiosity, I want to see what the signal for the mass airflow sensors are looking like, comparing them, and I will compare them bank to bank. So I'm tapped into bank one, bank two, and just for uh, some sort of reference, I am on ignition coil one. And I will start it up. Check it at idle, see what it looks like. So I'm going to let that run for a little bit and then I'll take a look at the, uh, the data on it. Okay, I've also after setting up the scope, checking the frequencies, I have swapped sensors side to side just to satisfy any sort of possibility of display being caused by sensor issues bank to bank. So uh, I am in bank two, temperature 146, about 34. Okay, we'll go straight to bank one. is higher and that is lower sensor swap still no difference um, this is going to be an engine breathing issue okay this is what we pulled up from the uh, idle capture for the mass airflows channel A is bank 1 channel B is bank 2 and there's ignition as far as the actual signal it's just going to be a digital uh, feedback to the computer and then the computer uh, uses that to inter interpret I guess the flow so there a there is a signal obviously going back um, both kind of similar looking but just out of curiosity I wanted to see if we could see anything with the math channels. Okay, so there is one complete cycle from this ruler to this ruler. And here from far back, um, 
as far as frequency, it looks like it varies from point to point. So this sort of bunch, that sort of bunch, that sort of bunch, that sort of bunch. And you have your areas where there's some spacing as well. Now this is a little zoomed in. This is bank one, this is bank two. These are a little bit spread apart. These are a little bit joined. And that's at the beginning. And if we scroll over, you can see it kind of then flip flops. These get wider, those get closer. And then wider up top, closer on the bottom, wider. And it, it sort of looked like on the bottom it stayed wider longer. So that we got to the other to the end of that cycle. So there, as you can see, up to this point. From so from here all the way to the end, it looks like it got wider and stayed wider. Um, I don't know what these are supposed to look like. But I don't know if that's some sort of clue. Uh, it does look like both vary from wide to narrow, wide to narrow. But that one, I just noticed that in that end cycle, it stayed more in the wider range. Okay, so I actually went on the quick uh, test drive up and down the block. Uh, I couldn't get it to... Uh, have the code return after I cleared it after it did occur to me along with the stumble misfire here at idle um, so I went for a test drive and this is what came up in the uh, for bank 2 again same single code I was uh, scoping it both mass airflow signals so I'll see if I can see any more uh, evidence than what I was seeing when just at idle but uh, it looks like this is the only code that keeps returning uh, bank 2 regardless of mass airflow which one is in there uh, there is an airflow or breathing issue on that side and just before I shut it off I decided to look at the uh, the live dad uh, after popping up the code and uh, it's really warmed up now, but uh, this is bank one. So, uh, bounce around the 32, 4.3, and 145. So, we're less, we're at 31, uh, about the same, and way higher uh, temperature. So, still holding true. The deviated uh, figures are on bank two and it's continuous it just it's it, it's it's no matter which sensor again uh, there is something going on engine breathing wise okay so this is uh, if you look at the green when it starts to get more uh, abundant that's when I started to accelerate and drive and then uh, it came off a little bit but you can see that pattern in the uh, black channels here this is uh, bank two bank one and there is difference there uh, during that whole acceleration time uh, this one's like I'll call it pegged out this one has these dropouts in that same period this is bank two and you let off and then uh, drove for a little um, more of a drop out there than that one and then again there while I started driving again um, there is differences in bank 2 according to how the mass airflow is reporting the airflow of the engine 
So seeing those differences in the mass airflow signal, uh, especially with the math, cha math channels, both at idle and driving or accelerating, um, I, I believe that that's at least where the trouble code is being generated from. As far as why it's breathing differently, why there's two different characteristic um, breathing maps, I'll call them. Uh, that is what we need to try to find out and determine as to uh, what what's causing it. So in order to get just a good, good, better uh, picture of trying to see if it's going to be mechanical, I need to get a measurement of how the engine's breathing, basically uh, intake pulls. Uh, this engine is very difficult to uh, get any of that type of information until I believe I got lucky because I saw this port here um, and my idea is to this here is coming from and is for the uh, uh, EVAT purge and I believe I got lucky on this one because this is kind of like a second generation almost like a TU of the N63 which um, has a purge valve there and a second one here. I'm not sure if, uh, I can't remember if the first gen only has one or if it does have two, but I know for sure it doesn't have this connecting pipe that goes to both um, purge valves in this front area. Nonetheless, uh, after I saw this, knowing that these will feed behind the throttle body, which would be in the intake manifold now, which then lets us tap into uh, physically see engine intake vacuum pulls or pulses uh, and just let us get a true factual visualization of how the engine is breathing to give us a better idea to see if that's what's causing our air breathing difference situation. Uh, so what I am going to do is tap in here and I've found these spare connectors that I've made this harness, the same style connectors, so I will un unplug the both connectors, I'll tie in this harness and just feed power and ground simultaneously which will let us uh, open the purge solenoids and while open we'll be able to view now uh, get a get a connection into the intake manifold and into the uh, intake breathing at least this lets us go further uh, past just scan data or you know mass airflow reading on the scanner bank to bank. This will give us a good physical view and condition of how the engine's breathing by reading the intake pulses. Okay, here's that capture that we just did and we'll zoom in and try to get an idea. Let's see. And, wow. Um, well, sh sure enough, we are seeing some intake pulls but we are seeing inconsistent pulls. Let's get some rulers on here to try to identify, see what's going on. But this is, uh, it's interesting for sure. Um, okay, we're zoomed in. Here are the eight intake breathing columns. And firing order, one, five, four, eight, six, three, seven, two. So let's identify and see which ones are which. Uh, 360, the one over. This is pull for number one. This is for number five. This is for number four. Uh, number eight. And then six, three, seven, 
and two back to one. All the all the deep pulls are for bank one. All the ones that have less of a pull or are different are for bank two. We are definitely clearly seeing a mechanical breathing difference bank to bank. Um, bank two it seems like it's not having as deep of pulls and which I guess could correlate with also the uh, breathing trouble codes that we are getting and seeing uh, with the map sensor signal that uh, it seems to be pulling in less air so there's there's an issue there there's something going on uh, difference bank to bank uh, to avoid any possibilities of readings as far as where I'm tapped in I might try to see if I could tap in differently uh, just to eliminate possibility of it displaying the way that it is because of the the source of where I'm tapped if possibly the length to the plenum bank to bank is what could be causing it to look this way so I might try to change my source of tap to see if it changes anything um, I don't want to assume or go down this rabbit hole if all it is is based off of uh, a source of where I'm tapped making it look this way um, if this was a regular regular type of vehicle with a, a a joined singular plenum where you're tapped in and capturing the pulls if you were to see this it's definitely going to be a mechanical issue breathing issue bank to bank which then would uh, lead to uh, opening up an engine and and doing big repairs but i uh wasn't expecting but maybe was expecting this just because of gut feeling it's, it's just not there's something going on with the breathing for bank two it's just not breathing right and then pulling this waveform and seeing this it it's definitely letting us see that there is breathing differences bank to bank as long as where I'm tapped in is a true uh, reading of how it's breathing bank to bank now along with this I think I want to also do um, further testing still where I'm at with these two channels and add some more. Okay, so I'm gonna, I just added the relative compression. And so as far as uh, relative compression let's see okay so it's it's showing them all relatively pretty much even across the board but right now it looks like it's not changing the compression but uh, we'll, we'll continue on so I decided to, yes, go further to try to eliminate any um, differences being by sharing that one singular uh, plastic pipe between both solenoids. So I am going to independently, with these uh, makeshift connections, uh, read both intake manifolds separately from each other, but at the same time and see how those uh, captures look bank to bank. Okay, and so here is the capture of the intake measurement while being independently captured, not through that one single shared port. And again, we are seeing differences in the pulls or patterns bank to bank. So the known good is up in the green and the bank two is in the purple. Right away, like we said, just bank to bank, the differences 
between the two are pretty obvious. Number one was the one with the stronger pulls. Number two looks to have pulls present, but they are clearly not identical or similar to bank one. If you have an engine that's the same engine and it's breathing different bank to bank, this is now we are capturing independently the pulls from the intake manifold from each side of the engine and we are getting two totally different patterns of how it is breathing. Again, this is just leading more to the engine is not physically breathing properly the way it's ingesting air or attempting to ingest air on bank two is just not right something is impeding it physically to be normal looking like bank one that is more of what we are used to seeing of having pulls come up have pulls come up this one it, it's having drastic drops they're they're very sharp drops for the pulls and then the, you can see this like rise like not much activity after the pull and it just kind of goes back up to its uh, starting level sort of say so at this point all we can clearly see is that they are not breathing physically the same bank to bank it correlates again more with uh, the trouble code and the uh, mass airflow data uh, everything is kind of coming down it's narrowing down we we physically can see by measuring and we're physically measuring how the engine is ingesting air and it's definitely not the same bank to bank and this is a physical thing that is going on Okay, so I decided to do a couple more captures with uh, different sensors. I switched over two inches of water for both banks. Uh, again, this is during cranking and independently uh, tapped into them simultaneously. Part of the reason why I switched to the uh, more sensitive sensor, basically, other than the fact that it's more sensitive, is because the levels that we are pulling, even in the known good, and as far as the pulls go, Aren't, they're not that great to where it'll go off the scale on this sensor. It, they're just very minute pulls that this engine does uh, while cranking. So being that they're very minute, I was able to switch over and catch a little bit more in detail what was going on. And right off the bat, the one thing that stood out to me was, hopefully it comes out here on the camera but this is the the bank one you get the pull come up pull come up and so on again this bank two the pull 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 but the the way that it's coming on this inches of water sensor if you remember on the other one after the pull it kind of just died off and it ramped Basically, it just ramped off to a certain level until there was another pull. This one, the way it's capturing it, it catches that sooner. That um, starting point, I'll call it, before a pull. And they are all flatlined. Initially, I thought I was maxing out my uh, sensor because of it being flatlined. But it actually isn't because this actual level... And voltage, I believe, is the same as that one. And I can try to get a figure for you to help you understand that. The levels should be about the same. Okay, so I've got my cursors on there. And they're very, very close as far as that beginning point I'll call it before the pulls okay, so being that the, the levels are about the same but they look different is another thing that I noticed which is pretty crazy 
again, it's showing physical difference bank to bank. What you're seeing here, and what you're not seeing here, this, after a pull, you'll see these little humps on the known good bank one. Basically, what you're seeing there, I'll call that um, like a flutter. Like we're measuring, capturing flutter. Basically, air mass moving, causing flutter. You're seeing the, the, the air speed traveling, moving. We're capturing some of that flutter in there during the air speed movement. Here on the bad bank, we are not getting any flutter. We are not not seeing that. We're just physically not seeing that. There's something going on there that, along with the sharp pulls here, where it goes from that stagnant point, I'll call it, to a pull. It's very sharp of a drop when it creates a pull. And we have dead dead movement almost basically going on there so that's another thing that I noticed and I did off camera take these air boxes apart separately and um, just take my word there is no uh, nothing restrictive nothing that's going to impede airflow bank to bank this is the one for the uh, bad reading um, bank. So both of them uh, look the same, nothing obstructing airflow in either one. Now I wanted to show an example, another example of uh, signs of what we're seeing. Now obviously I, I grabbed this plug from the driver's side which is bank two the the bad bank and this one that I've got laying here is bank one. Now let me see if I can try to explain this well. Um, <clears throat> another sign that we are that I noticed is the way this spark plug looks on particularly I guess the ground strap there electrode it's more of a a white covered compared to the one from the good bank so even the way that it's burning it's burning differently and it's clearly seen uh, on the spark plug as well physically the uh, remnants of, of the burn and even in the center um, portion there and then in, in the center, this guy here almost has like a coating on of dust. There that you can see. Actually all of it is like a coating of dust. This just has it in a different form compared to that. So it's, it is truly physically running, burning, breathing, breathing differently, which is causing it to burn differently. All right, I've actually put the coils all back, uh, plugged them all back in. I'm actually gonna leave it the way it is and let it idle. Uh, it's going to run really rough. Both mass airflows are unplugged, but I just want to see what it looks like. And 
it was just high idle and it dropped down and now it's uh, obviously misfiring big time on two cylinders and I'll shut it off okay so now we're going to take a look at that uh, crank startup idle with the in cylinders on one and five and obviously are both uh, intake traces as well uh, right off the bat uh, you can see that portion of the high idle before it dips down and stabilizes and pretty much the in cylinders kind of were matching up pretty close one thing again that I will show you is purple is bank 2 just off in this distance view you can see some portions in this area in this area compared to other areas that on the purple something happens there and there and it, it does change a little bit here as well but compared to bank one you don't see any standout points and now again we're very far off view I'll call it but just <laughs> at this point you can s the fact that you can see differences occurring again it tells you some more of a story on the breathing portion I'll show you that here in a minute but just to kind of just uh, clarify and show you the in cylinders this is at the first startup and both banks running are pretty similar here at this point at the bottom you do see some um, that's from phasing and it's on both banks the exhaust is uh, closing early but that's at the startup idle phasing and you could see on um, both banks occurring nothing to worry about there the pockets and the way that appears and comes out is not different distinctively different bank to bank there's no measurable standout difference on both banks despite the fact that the engine is breathing different again I believe it's due to how minute of the difference is in levels that it doesn't affect it physically down here as much in measurable pressure readings and now if I point out that first section that you could that stands out on that bank it's this portion here and it almost looks like it well first of all it starts off a certain jaggedy way then it goes to some sort of sawtooth and then goes back jaggedy compare that to the bank one bank one is pretty much uniform all throughout there's a better view that's when it goes from jaggedy to sawtooth and back to jaggedy but bank one is consistently just having consistent pulls there's there's physical changes going on here with bank two something is not right and that other second portion where it stands out is this area here where it kind of kind of flatlined for a couple cycles or so maybe three or four cycles again all while bank one stays consistent and at this portion again was when it transitioned from the high idle then down to the dip down uh, stabilized lower idle whatever's happening in there happened to not act right or happened to mess up the breathing also and we're capturing it or we're not seeing what's going on this is all we are capturing from where we are tapped in but what it caused also because kind of flatlining lessening the vacuum because vacuum is going to be down if we flatlined and didn't have 
that much vacuum, we built up actually higher compression at that point for a couple cycles. As you can see there, it, it actually built up more compression on that bank when it transitioned from the high idle to the stabilization again physical issue being caused by the way that it's breathing on that side made it actually have higher compression and lastly I've got this capture here of in cylinder cranking to show you what the uh, pressure readings for the in cylinder look like compared to the intake pulls for both banks and see what the differences are this is going to be bank one this will be bank two cylinder five cylinder one so first we'll start with cylinder one bank one and this here is the compression tower tdc tdc and here is our four sections of our strokes here is 360, here is our intake section, or intake stroke for this cylinder number one. Here are your pulls one, two, three, four, not in that particular order, but four actual pulls for this bank that we are independently tapped into. This pull here that you see is the pull for cylinder number one. As far as what is going on in this dip here for this engine while cranking at 360 is when after that is when the intake strokes begins. The reason why this starts to dip down into vacuum is because the exhaust valve closes somewhere in this region before 360 it opens there and it closes before just before 360 or should intake valve is still not open when the 360 mark happened and at this point the piston at from 360 starts to travel downward to create a vacuum and help pull in air from the intake. The reason why it's traveling down into vacuum is because both valves are closed. So it's creating a suction within itself in the cylinder and it's going into negative pressure creating vacuum. At this point where you see that change of pressure, that in the cylinder we're measuring is when the intake valve opened that far into the intake stroke past the 360 that's when the intake valve opened the only way that can happen while the piston is traveling downwards is for a leak to occur that leak is the intake valve coming off its seat letting vacuum be lost and that's why we get a rise in pressure up to atmospheric pressure. So we know the intake valve opened because of that. Compare that to the intake pull. So if we mark that line there, at that point, that's when that trace started to travel south. Now as far as the intake pull waveform, the reason why that started to travel south was because at that point when the intake valve opened in the cylinder head, it now became exposed, the intake became exposed to in cylinder where that in cylinder was in the state of vacuum, that much vacuum. Once the valve was off its seat, it connected the end cylinder to the intake plenum. And since that was in vacuum, 
that then went into vacuum because they're connected now. That pulled down into negative because that was in negatives. But this then now was rising in pressure. And when these two basically uh, meet, I'll call it, when that's done rising in pressure and that's done pulling in negatives, they get to a basically stabilized point where that can't go any more negative and that can't go any more positive. That's where that pull in the intake manifold came from because it was in vacuum, the intake valve opened at that time, that's the same time that went down and that rose up and that finished when they both basically, I'll call it, meet up here and they stabilized until the next one does the same thing in that same bank. Now if we look at the same exact thing for now cylinder 5 and bank 2, here is compression tower, top dead center, compression tower, top dead center, here is that dip down, here's 360, here's our intake stroke portion or section, and here are the pulls. We have one, two, three, four, and then back again with one. This pull here is going to be for this cylinder's intake stroke section. That's the one for cylinder five. Again, like explained before, these pulls look way, way drastically different. We already know that, but there are some. <clears throat> that is where we can see some of the uh, differences of what's going on, at least some sort of uh, a, a measurable point. Now if we look at that same area that we did on cylinder 1, where we know that the intake valve opened, if we uh, put a marker there, we can clearly see that this does not match what we saw on bank 1. We know the valve open for sure, there's no denying that, that's the only way that pressure can change in the cylinder from going into deep vacuum and then losing it. It's the only way is from the valve to get off its seat. So we know that happened. We don't see that occurring here like we did on bank one's intake pulls. We're still in that stagnant delayed area it's still straight. It didn't pull till it got over here. So now it didn't pull or show a pull till that much in time or I guess in degrees afterwards from the valve opening. And then as far as this kind of uh, stabilizing point for the in-cylinder pressure reading at least, the intake pull came down, delayed, and then kind of just reached its point and stayed kind of stagnant like I'm saying so it, it it stabilized sort of at this point because we know from here there's not much movement it kind of just stays dead and slowly rises but we're not seeing that same matching of pressure coinciding with the manifold compared to in cylinder and working in unison this we what we literally are seeing is a delay from from the in cylinder to where we are tapped into in the intake manifold now we're right behind the throttle body so behind the throttle body where we're tapped in this is our pressure reading this is inside the engine in the chamber in the cylinder from the throttle body or just behind the throttle body to inside the engine cylinder we are getting a delay like basically almost like a restriction we're seeing our our reading in time our reading in time here is delayed from that one there's something there in between those two points 
that is not letting us capture true readings here. Whatever is going on is I also creating, I guess, that that buffer, I'll call it, to where it doesn't show us the flutter of air traveling, the air moving. We, we are being isolated with some sort of buffer, I'll call it, for what's really going on or, or from what's going on. So something inside that engine, in that area, is creating a restriction with the breathing. It's creating physical breathing properties that are different, bank to bank. And it's, it's, it's all in minute scaling, but it's enough to create this engine to not be happy as far as physical burning of the mixture, as far as the window range of the air, air mass reading for the computer and we're we're physically measuring that it's just it's just physically different the way it's breathing another thing that i wanted to explain is those uh sharp drops in the intake again if you see uh, this just it's a it's a drastic drop it Barely, it's one thin line. It just, from that stagnant point till when it suddenly just has to drop. That's what we're capturing is because there's that um, kind of, basically, like I said, restriction or buffer. So what we are basically literally also seeing is the, the change in time of basically end speed because of in time because it's, delayed or restricted is why we're getting that sharp drop basically it's it's gonna get to a pull regardless but because of being delayed and not being captured earlier but it has to get there it's because it's delayed but has to drop is why it's such a drastic fast crazy fast drop that's why this pattern looks the way that it does it's it's, it's stagnant because we're not seeing or the air is not moving properly. So it's kind of stagnant. And then when it wants to move or has to move, it's just kind of delayed but still has to get there. As we saw with, with it, the uh, in cylinder, it has to get down there because that pressure changed in the cylinder. But... The delayness or restriction is what causes this drastic from top to bottom swoop. It's a sharp swoop down. Another area that I wanted to point out in this waveform that you can see in, in detail is the uh, when the intake valve opens, measured in time or degrees. This one is for bank one. So from... 360 to the point where it opens we have 54 degrees and now on bank 2 when you compare that intake valve opening down there it's at 55 degrees so pretty much the same physical point the valve is opening bank to bank. That right there in itself gives us another clue or key piece about what either is wrong or isn't wrong. What that is telling me physically, the the lobes, the uh, eccentric shaft, the cams, the rockers, lifters, springs, any and all of that physical valve train control is the same bank to bank it in physical form is operating moving opening the same bank to bank so everything that we are seeing difference wise is with air movement mass volume um the the either the lack of it the restriction something buffering it, it it's all related to something impeding air flow. 
So up to this point with everything that I've gathered information wise with the scope, uh, all the waveforms, the, the pressure readings, the in cylinder, the scan data, everything that's culminating uh, and gathered, it brings me to a point to where if the customer wants to proceed, it's going to cost basically in money terms um, a lot of a lot of time and money to now go further past the measurable point that we've been doing. Now we get to the point where if the customer wants to, we're going to physically have to basically start opening up things and taking things off. Due to that fact, the customer just decided to stop there and not go further um, at this point. So unfortunately, I cannot get to the true in-hand physical problem to be able to show and or display. But the thing that I want you to take away from this is that first and foremost, the reason why it was brought to me was for a check engine light, simple enough. Scan it to see if it's going to be something that can be replaced that can rectify this. And the quick answer is, after doing all this, the quick answer is no, it's not. If it goes anywhere else or if it someone else without the knowledge of from what we just saw can very easily just sell a mass airflow sensor. When that doesn't take care of it, they'll sell them probably a tune-up, you know, plugs, coils, possibly injectors, who knows? I mean, the list can just grow from there. There is no amount of those auxiliary parts that can be thrown on this vehicle that's going to make it turn that check engine light off. The reason why the light comes on is because the computer can see from the, the data that it's not happy. It's not happy bank to bank. It's different. It's out of a certain range. And they can see it through that uh, basically where we saw with the math channel, the way that it's breathing in that frequency, that was one of our clues that we saw. The first clue really was the temperature that rises on that side. And I think with everything that I'm seeing or can come up with is that there's truly some sort of restriction. That's why that, that temperature is rising. That's why some of the readings look buffered or delayed in time with that pressure change. Also, I think it affects it to the point where it makes a pattern flip-flop where it, on that one portion where it was sawtooth, then jagged edge, and, and so on. I mean, it could very simply be, could it be a rag that's sucked down in the, into the intake? Could it be carbon buildup? Could it be, who knows what it can be? I mean, it, but I believe that it's some sort of restriction in that point. I, this vehicle does have Valtronics. I off camera, I do have some captures, but I did cranking no start and I monitored the Valtronic motor simultaneously bank to bank to see if that came into play while having those different in readings bank to bank on the intake and the Valtronic did not interact and and create any of those difference in breathings. So I eliminated that. The, the throttle blades, when they moved bank to bank, they moved the same amount. And so the readings were still skewed bank to bank. So I knew it wasn't a throttle body also. I was at, at one point beginning to think possibly cam lobe wear issues, Valtronic eccentric shaft, or the worm gear teeth meshing or too loose with the Valtronic shaft teeth. But I kind of threw that out the window when you can see that the intake valve opens and it opens, it actually opens the same time and degrees as bank one. Being that it opens in the same amount or same point tells me there's no physical wear of, of valve train components 
So it's, it, it, that is out the window as well. I, again, I really wish that uh, we were able to go further, but this is more of, again, showing if take those readings, they have to, the engine has to physically breathe the same bank to bank if it's one engine. It's built the same way, side to side, it has to breathe the same. And the fact that it's not, that it didn't, what we saw, all the data, everything is just it culminates to a, a physical problem that in order to be rectified, you have to get in there again, like we stated earlier. So I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that I didn't lose you too much. I hope it was interesting. And um, unfortunately, you couldn't get the true, true, definite final answer, but it's enough data to make a call. That's all basically that I was asked to do. So, and with that said, that's all that I can show and or explain on this one. So I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.